Right, we're back again, guys. Jay from Just Technics. We're revisiting the Pioneer DDJ Rev7, well, motorized platter controller. Really nice bit of kit. Uh, did a brief video on this before, showing a few people the comparisons between this and the Native Instruments Tractor S4 Mark III. Uh, you know, whether it's worth spending the extra money on this unit or spending less on the Native Instruments unit. I mean, they are built for two completely different tasks, so we're going to go into that in a minute. But first of all, before I even start, massive thank you to Jacket Pioneer DJ for lending me this controller for this long period of time. It is going tomorrow, hence why this video is being done today. There is a separate mix video that I have literally just finished recording in the same process here with separate audio. If I can get that onto YouTube, then uh, without any copyright issues, then of course that will be done and we'll be trying that a little bit later on this evening. But anyway, DDJ Rev 7, if you are a turntablist, guys, this thing is phenomenal, okay? It pretty much does everything you're going to want this to do if you are a scratch DJ, all right, or an open format DJ, which is pretty much what this controller has been designed to do, what it's been designed to use for. So, large 7-inch platters, perfect for scratching. I have had no issues whatsoever with this after tinkering around with the crossfader settings, firmness of the fader, uh, cutting distance. You can do all this on software. It's, you get your head around it, it's pretty straightforward to use. But what you basically got is a top of the range scratch mixer with a Magfeld Pro fader built in, which is lovely and light on the lighter setting. Channel fader is also nice and light too. Plenty of Q button, sampler, roll, save, all the goodies you'd normally find on any Pioneer mixer or good quality Pioneer mixer with an interface built in. Um, you're kind of in the realm of do you buy the mixer separately or do you buy the all-in-one controller? Not to say all-in-one, I mean dedicated controller for use with a, with a laptop or PC. The problem that you've got is, I think from what I've been seeing online, if you were to buy a Pioneer scratch mixer and you've got a couple of turntables, it's probably going to cost you about 1,500 quid, right, for a basic setup with a good, you know, a good scratch turntablist unit by Pioneer for a new one. But you spend the extra few hundred quid, you get these. The only problem that you're going to have is, by the time you put turntables next to this unit, as you can imagine, I'm standing here like this, your turntable's all the way over here, and it is a bit, a fair bit of distance. It's almost like if you were using, well, not the same as the new Mark NS7. I mean, the NS7 was a beast anyway. I mean, that was majorly oversized for what it was. But if you imagine using, if you've ever used the four-channel version of the NS7, quite a large unit, and you're having to reach over to your turntables, it'd be a very similar process. But this isn't as bad. I mean, you can quite comfortably stick your hands either side of this controller with enough distance to work on a couple of turntables. So if you are going to be using this with time code vinyl or whatever you're going to do, I shouldn't see you really having any issues with having to stretch over. So you really do need to think whether it's best of spending £1,500 and buying a standalone Pioneer unit with the Magfell Pro Fader or spending another three, £400 on this unit with everything built in. So it's a no-brainer really. If you mix hip-hop, R&B, or you're a bit of a mix mash of genres and you don't really, even if you don't mix, all you're really doing is you're scratching things in, throwing a few effects over, which a lot of DJs are used to doing now, you know, throwing an echo over and fading a track down. Boring, of, I think it's boring, but if it pays your bill, <laughs> if it pays your bills, if you get booked and you get playing for an entire hour of a night, two hours or a whole night, and all you're doing is pushing an echo and moving faders down, and you're getting paid for it, then who cares what you use? It's the truth, isn't it? This thing will do everything you want. The only gripe that I have, being a techno, hard dance, and a trance DJ, is these bloody sliders. These pitch sliders, they are the bane of my life. I mean, I scratch as well, so I was very eager to get onto this unit and give it a good go over and give it my honest opinion. It's a 10 out of 10 as far as I'm concerned for scratching. That's what it was built for. So if I want something just to practice my, my cuts with, this is the unit I use. If I want to scratch over tracks and record them separately, this is the unit I would use if I didn't have individual CDJs or turntable setups ready at my disposal. This is the unit you would go for and I would go for. Um, it's those pitch controls, guys. This is the problem, because it wasn't designed for a mixing-based DJ. It's an open format slash turntable controller. They really haven't given that much thought for mixing DJs. Like I say, it's not designed for it. So if you're used to using battle-style turntables, you know you turn your turntable side on, your pitch controls up the top. You'll be fine with that. But this is a controller. 
I don't really see the benefit of moving them from the analog traditional style around the right hand side to the top on a controller, but it is each to their own. I feel like they've isolated the majority of the market by having something like this with the pitch controls in that position, because pretty much every, well, every controller out on the market, bar Pioneer's new controllers that have just released, this particular one and the other smaller one are done for the budget DJs, everything is on the right hand side in club style. So if you are using at the moment, even if you're using CDJs and your pitch controls are obviously going to be on the right, if you don't want to use clunky individual equipment and you want to go for something like this all in one, stick it in a flight case and make your life easier, you have to put up with those pitch still. And it's still going, it's a step backwards in that respect, I think. But Again, it's not designed for us mixing boys. Now, on the separate video you see, it's exactly the same camera layout and everything. I've literally just finished having a mix on them. Um, but all you'll see is my hand like this. It's constantly, you match the BPMs up, leave it. But then what I did find, no matter whether anti-drift was turned off, because you have anti-drift in Serato, you're not meant to turn it off, but I was recommended by Pioneer to switch it off to give it a bit of a go. Even with anti-drift turned off and on, I find that these are pretty hard work trying to keep things lined up. And it will be quite apparent when you do listen and see my video. Um, you have pitch bend buttons on the bottom left-hand side of each turntable section, we'll call it. So you can pitch bend down or up. All sounds great, doesn't it? But they're incredibly sensitive. Now, whether you can adjust the sensitivity, I don't know. I'm not going to dig into any of that. But they are uber sensitive. If you are slowing down your track, you can manipulate this in the same style as you would using a turntable. So in that respect, it's actually okay. And if you change the torque settings, it's fine. But there's obviously no spindle. Now, a lot of people online have been moaning about this. There's no spindle to speed your track up. And I kind of see now why what i was having to do was actually having to physically push the platter on the side while making movements with the pitch and the problem is like this you see the way that my wrist arcs like that it just gets your wrist so you're going to be constantly having to do this now you've got to do what i do and almost stand to the side and work on it like that so you can see my shoulders sticking over here hence why the camera's just wobbled but you can see what i'm doing i'm sort of standing at the side so i can kind of treat it as a turntable so unless you've got enough space to do that you you're not really going to get on with it i don't think but they stay in they stay locked and you find they start to gradually drift and we're not talking like a turntable they just out of nowhere just drift and i mean my laptop is in superb uh, specifications for anything that i've ever used i've got no issues whatsoever plenty of ram super fast uh, cpu it's just a gaming laptop that i use and trust me I, my background used to be computers way before even to do with turntables that's fine for what this is used for this is it's a mixed bag with me i mean would i rely on this turning up to play an hour's set at a gig um personally for the style that i use i would rather turn up there with a couple of usb sticks slam them in the cdjs smash out techno for an hour and a half um you know and just get me stuff and stay for a bit of a drink with the mates and then go that's what i would use this will do the job if you are like i say an r&b a hip-hop or open format dj as long as you are happy with the way the pitch responds where the pitch is and the fact that you may have drift on the platters it is quite nice being able to you know fight with the platter the same as you would with a turntable but it's not the same the biggest letdown which this doesn't have is the spindle and i think the rain one for an example wins in that area because it has the spindle there that's yet to be a controller i've actually had my hands on maybe i'll have to look at looking at one next so if anybody out there has a rain one you're looking you'd like to let me delve into and have a bit of a go over please feel free to contact me if you're in the uk otherwise i'm gonna have to buy one and uh, do a separate review um but yeah i think the spindle would have been quite a nice adjustment even if they incorporated the screen around it i don't see how that would have been too much effort to be honest because they could have had something come out of the sides the way that the platter actually clips on underneath there's two plastic clips the whole thing lifts off they could have actually embedded the plat the spindle underneath the plastic of the acrylic and had it come up so even though it's separate it's not separate to this you still would have had something to get your head your hands around and i think that would have been a big difference even for me with the style that i play with um but everything else all in general i mean it's a shame because that's the biggest thing that i look for is something that i can mix on for scratching this thing is insane i mean the fact that i've got both hands free now i can actually show you so i've got this adjusted for pretty much minimal you can see it here minimal cutting when you've just got to touch the slider 
you've got this at the moment the the fader is on its lightest movement it's a magfell throw fader so you've got plenty of scope and adjustment but you can see while it's by the way i move this it's nice and light i can then firm the slider up physically on the unit and you can see now it firms it right up so if you are a mixing dj that's going to do you a treat if you're into your chops and obviously scratching in general you're going to want it on a lighter setting i think now in my opinion this whoops the inner fader in in the respect of adjustability the problem with the inner fader is if you've ever had one before to actually adjust one you have to take the slider out of the unit you've got to have a physical screwdriver in hand with the slider centered in the central position then you adjust the firmness and all the the way that it moves including the cutting lag distance etc all on the slider itself and if you want to do it outside of the mixer you need to buy a separate box unit not a lot of money but you also need to make sure that you can put the box where you want it on your mixer or controller and have the ribbon cable attached to it it's there's a lot involved okay you can't change the slider on this as far as i'm aware i mean i spoke to pioneer about this they're not going to tell me probably yes or no anyway being a pioneer unit with their magfell pro fader but for me after getting my head around it, I used to use Inner Fader. I've used Inner Fader for years. I've always sworn blindly by Inner Fader. But after using this, this particular cross fader, yeah, I can see why people like this. I mean, have it on the lighter setting. Cutting distance as standard is, is a little bit too far for me. So I had to delve into Pioneer settings on the laptop. And you can actually adjust the cutting to literally zero. So what that means is the minute you just give it a little touch the sound is full whack with full curve and that is exactly how i like it so in other words when i queue up a scratch sample you can see you just got to touch it and it comes through look I think that's fine. For my style of scratching, what I do over fast music, that is absolutely spot on. Nothing wrong with that at all. I love that. If, like I said, if I wanted to buy a controller just for scratching over my mixes and queuing in samples, this would be the one. 100%. Plenty of scope here with the cues as well. So again, you've got eight different cue spots. Well, actually, you've got double that but I use it for eight different cue spots so you can shift and begin back at your track. Let's get rid of all of the other cues like you would do. So you can see on here, so you can do that. You can change the waveform as well. You can zoom into the waveform. You can see me moving this on the screen. So you can zoom into the waveform, you can zoom out, it's a nice touch. You've got the digital marker as well. Yeah, you've got a physical marker on there, which is great. You can change the speed setting as well. So inside your software, you can have it playing at 33 or 45, which is nice. So if you're used to having the, the actual platter physically moving faster, you can adjust that. So 33 and 45 modes. You have slip sheets built underneath here as well. Now, according to my contact at Pioneer, they've told me, well, he's told me, you only comes with one sheet. Now, I've been looking for the manual that says two sheets. Now, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. But all I can say is this unit has two sheets, but I've been told it comes with one sheet and it's basically if you imagine a uh, a plastic sheet that you put underneath your turntable slip mat like a butter rug that you get back in the day or the dr suzuki slip mats underneath and they used to come with a couple of sheets of plastic that used to stick underneath and it used to make the platter super super slippery now in my honest opinion here I prefer having one, one sheet, or if not, nothing at all. Now, it makes no difference in that aspect towards what I could see after delving into these units and looking underneath. There isn't anything really stopping the platter from working or to cause any problems with the slip sheets removed. Although, as they if they come with them, obviously Pioneer are going to recommend not taking them out and using them how they are. But you have got that scope and flexibility to remove one or two, well, one of them at least. So... 
people like me, if it goes wrong, I can change things over and, you know, go, just get along with it. But I would, if I was you, one or two slip sheets. If it comes with two, try it. It might feel a bit too glassy. I think it's too light with two. So I've got it down with one at the moment, and I think it feels a lot better. I'm going to look into seeing about maybe some slip mats or something underneath because I can design my own. Be interesting to see what I can come up with. Maybe some graphic kits for these. Uh, again, it's time, guys, especially platter kits so you can stick them on the top of your names. But it's just an acrylic, plas acrylic plastic um, that makes meant to look like a vinyl record and feel like a vinyl record and it is very very nice but yeah plenty of scope of effects so the effects for an example if i get the scratch sample on here again an echo the spin mode see spin mode flanger everyone's heard of flanger everyone loves a flanger Right, reverb. In fact, a tip for you guys, reverb when scratching. I love using reverb when scratching. It just makes things, just finishes things off a lot nicely. Reverb brake mode. I think that's probably self-explanatory as to what brake mode is. Duck down. There are some cool effects on this. Obviously, you can edit your effects through the software as well with Serato. You can go through your tracks using the knobs on here, which then control it through the screen. You have, if you have two different tracks locked in here at the moment, if you're very eagle-eyed, if I turn these volumes down, you'll see this. So left-hand side deck is obviously a scratch sample, as you can see on here. You now have a look at the right-hand side screen. You see this here? That is your left track. So you see it moving up and down? So the idea is when you have BPMs on here and you have physical tracks locked together, you can see whether they're locked in or not with this line going across the top. But you'll actually get to see both waveforms from both turntables. And if you don't want to look at your screen, you can just look at these, which is a very nice way of doing so. You can also change the information on the screens as well. Lots of things that you can do with these. Um, but yeah, you've got your BPMs at the top, you've got your keys. Obviously, start and see what your stop times on them, like you to do with CDJs. Uh, trims across the sides on these, so trims aren't directly above the EQs. You've got a free band EQ of complete ultimate kill on obviously the treble, the mid, and the bass. Filter position is really nice. All of the buttons feel extremely good quality, as expected with any Pioneer unit. You've got physical locks on the effects, so you can go over the top of your effects and it will keep going over the top. You've then obviously got your flash on and off, so you can basically transform these on or off, and they feel quite loose for the reason that you can transform them. That's a nice effect as well. Um, pitch controls, again, there's no point going too far into the pitch. It's the same as dedicated with, um, with Serato, so you can obviously adjust the tempo range. So as standard at the moment, they're on plus or minus eight. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really too much really to go into with this. It's a controller. They're all the same as each other, really. Until someone brings one out, which they're like turntables, there's no point really delving into these. But yeah, it's just a very nice, compact, I'll say compact, it is. It's a compact unit in terms of size when you compare it to the NS7 uh, Mark II with the four channels or some of these really big and bulky ones that haven't got flight cases. It is a little bit on the heavy side. It's not as heavy as an NS7, but it does come with a separate power supply that you can see I've put on the corner of the video here. So you've got a separate cable. There's no power brick inside the unit or supply inside the unit. That probably would have made things a lot heavier, interfered with different things internally, audio hum, etc. because of the transformer. But I can see why they've done it separately. But it would have been a nice touch to have designed a power supply that fits inside this unit and maybe make it a little bit bigger. Because the USB on this, you've got two separate USB uh, connections here for A and B for two laptops as well as the power connector. Now naturally when you're setting these up you'd immediately think that the USB and the power are both going to be next to each other. So me what I would have done was actually had the power supply inside the unit jiggery pokery in the unit to make sure there's no interference from the power supply make sure things don't get too hot uh, made the section slightly bigger even just on a corner and had the USBs and the power 
a separate output on the back so you naturally just reach over and plug them in because every time I was going to connect this I would naturally just connect it in the corner realizing that it's not there it's here <laughs> so I'm not the only person that's probably done this the, the actual mixer section itself can be used with turntables now I have tested this out on turntables I mean the audio quality is absolutely fine the crossfader feels lovely with them so if you're looking for something that's going to be used with a, a control unit and with turntables as a separate mixer you really are are going to feel at home with this the physical cueing side of things now with scratch mixes in general they can be quite funny i remember with the djm 909 for an example you used to have literally a master or a cue section you flip it to cue and you'd have your miniature crossfader in your headphones and then you clip it to master and you couldn't go between your cue settings without having to switch the toggle this one has a physical cue and master the same as what you would have on say like a djm 600 and 900 etc but you still have the miniature crossfader. So instead of having to physically click Q on separate buttons, you just go Q and then you go left or right and you can still fade between them. So instead of having to go Q and master, you just go to Q, fade it in your headphones and then what you do, if you're mixing the right hand side track in for an example, you'd have your right hand side track in your headphones, flip it over to master and then just gradually go from master to Q so you can hear your track obviously without people hearing it, and then close the master, open it up, keep doing it and keep doing it. And if you're happy with it, leave it on master and work on your EQs. That's as, it is as simple as that. So I find it, I find it fine. The only gripe that I have with the Q section is the buttons are tiny and they're a bit cramped. So you can see here with my fingers next to this look, I mean, there's not a lot of room really to be worked with. And you obviously working on the, the actual mix section from Q to master, your thumb, well, my thumb in particular, constantly hits the little slider for the cue so i'm a little bit uh, annoyed about that i would have preferred it if they had have had that slightly lower down maybe a bit more man size you know a bit more hands-on maybe the size of what you were used to having so the size of the eq buttons whether you can change them over i don't know i might have a look at doing that so one of the first things in fact should we have a quick look while we've got it here i think these are physically locked aren't they on a lot of these um I'm not even going to try it. They're all there nice and tight anyway. But if they can be switched over, the first thing I would do if I own this is change these over with a couple of pads that you're not going to use. So in my respect, uh, booth and master. It sounds ridiculous, but once you set them, if you're using it at home, if they're both nicely spaced out. If they fit on there and they're the same fitment, which they might be, I'd definitely be replacing them. So you've got some more hands-on, manly-style um fader knobs to be used but yeah there's plenty of things that you can be delving into this but me whenever i look at a controller or anything that is an all-in-one unit the first thing i look at is what the fader is like and we've already demonstrated that i'm happy with the fader the q output like i've just said apart from the fact that the buttons are so small it works perfectly and you're going to be well at home on that setting hot cues extremely easy so move it wherever you want to hit the q button perfect um, loops are the same as you would do with a CDJ, so you have separate loop in and loop out, super easy, you've got automatic loop, so you can loop a 4x4, 2-beat, whatever you want to do, uh, you've got the sync button, which is obviously the devil's work, the sync button, but you can use sync on these if you want to. Like I said as well, use it as a separate mixing unit, so you have turntables or CDJs next to it, whatever you're going to use. Separate line and phono input, which is great, so you can use that, or set, I don't know if it's separate or not, but they are... Um, I can't really remember if it's separate or not. But either way, you've got a separate mixer unit there. You can use that as a two-channel mixer for use with CDJs or vinyl. The platter feel is very, very nice. And like I've said as well, it does feel quite light. So you want to take one of the sheets out, but give it a go and just see how you get on. How many marks out of 10 would I personally give this as a controller with motorized units? Well, look, it's Pioneer's first ever attempt in the market of, of inventing something that has motorized units. And I personally, for scratching, I think they're great. The only gripe that I have with these, like I say, is the fact that there is no spindle. That could have been implemented. Maybe there's someone out there that will increase that, and I probably might be able to do something with that. Uh, but you will void your warranty if you do it with me. But there is something you can do. Um, also, the torque adjustment. You can adjust the torque on this if you don't like ultra high torque like you have with the Stansons or any other super oem hand pin turntable you can adjust the torque settings on this and lower the torque down so if you prefer the feel of a 1200 or a 1210 same turntable you can adjust them so there's a low and a standard or a high setting 
go between the two, adjust it to what you want. So you can do that as well. Um, yeah, how I many marks out of 10? Well, for the for, for design and things, apart from the sliders, I have to give it a 9 out of 10. The sliders are the one thing that I feel let this unit down for people that are going to be in the mixing side of things. For a turntable list, you're going to love it full stop. So I think for turntable list, you're all going to be giving this 11, 100 out of 10, whatever you want to do. I, for mixing DJs, will give this a 9 out of 10 purely for the slider units. That is the only gripe that I have. So anybody that watches this on my channel that is a mixing DJ, you need to get your head around the fact that the sliders are in battle style and not in club style. And I think they've alienated 90% of the market because of those sliders. Every controller has sliders in traditional club mode, not in battle style. That is my biggest gripe. Otherwise, this would be a perfect unit for just about anybody. And I think if that if the pitch was in the correct place, all these issues I say about working the platter and keeping the BPMs in, you'd feel more comfortable riding the uh, the pitch, you know, if it is down nearer the units, because you feel more comfortable. It just feels more comfortable when you're using it. Whereas if you're doing this, you're straining your arm, you're stretching your wrist, it just feels alien. You have to physically stand to the side to use them. But for something that throw off a few mixes with, yeah, it's fine if you're going to be using it at home. Uh, Club-wise, if you're a scratch DJ, hip-hop boy, R&B guy, open format, you're going to love it full stop. But for people that are purely mixing, stated for the one millionth time now, so there's quite a lot now, you're going to struggle because of those sliders. Other than that, great concept, great idea. Pioneer have knocked out of the park as far as I'm concerned with this. And that's not me saying this in any way to, to try and big up Pioneer. I'm not paid by Pioneer for these videos. These are my videos. These are my honest opinions like I do with any product that comes through here. Um, I give this a 9 out of 10 because of that. And if they genuinely were in the correct place, I'd probably buy one of these. And in fact, when Jack brought this down to me, the first thing I said is I love the look of it. The platters look great. They feel good. And uh, yeah, I give this a 10 out of 10 in terms of what they've done. I think it's a fantastic concept. They need to move the pitch <laughs> they need to move the pitch i would not be surprised if these if this is going to be two individual units at some point let's be realistic here guys i mean we know what the way like samsung and apple work you know you buy the latest thing six months a year six months down the line something else has come out you know it's going to be the same process i would have thought these would probably be ended up on cdjs or you know individual units so if i think they'll probably squash that with the next batch or whatever they bring out um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, massive respect to Pioneer for doing something like this. As a, as a turntable guy, it's hence why it's on my videos. Uh, I do give this a 10 out of 10 for concept design. It's just those pitch controls. Other than that, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Have you got one of these? I mean, are you on the waiting list for one? What are you going to be using it for? Give me a bit of background on what you're going to be using your controller for. If you own one, have you found any problems with it? Have you come across any little niggly issues, glitches, anything that really does annoy you when you're using Using them. I mean, to give you an idea of issues, I noticed with this unit being the prototype, commercial prototype, um, I did notice that the start and stops on occasion, I mean, the buttons themselves, the actual tactile switches work, but on occasion they either didn't do anything, the platters wouldn't spin, and uh, the unit would just freeze. I noticed that on a couple of occasions. I turned the unit on, one minute everything lights up, then all of a sudden nothing works. Now, being a commercial sample, I'm not surprised. I mean, the final version with Pioneer is fantastic. Everything they do, uh, working in the industry with DJ shops for a long time, when I used to work in a service department, I never really saw much Pioneer gear ever go back to Pioneer, being totally honest. So... It's not a cheap brand. It's a lot of money. They retail it just under £1,900. That's the biggest deal clencher with this. It is a lot of money, guys. £1,900. Think of what you can buy with that instead. I hate saying it, but you could buy a pair of Mark 7s and a cheap mixer. You know, and you could use time code, phase, whatever you're going to use. But it, it, it is what it is. It's a, a compact style unit. Everything all in one that you connect with one USB cable and a power supply and away you go. Take it to a gig, you know, drop, drag and drop your tracks on each deck and off you, off you pop. Easy peasy. There we go. We'll leave it at that. So guys, let me know what you think. And um, yeah, any, any questions you have about this unit, feel free to ask away in the comments. This is going to be leaving me tomorrow, so there's nothing too hands-on I can do. But I like I say, I've had a good hour or so's play with this and I recorded a 45-minute mix. So... I am pretty guru around the internal functions. So if there's anything you'd like to know, please feel free to comment below. And uh, again, massive thank you to Jack at Pioneer DJ. I really appreciate him bringing this down for the two, well, the three weeks it's been here. So thank you very much. And guys, I'll see you soon on the next video. Take it easy, peeps.